Do you wonder why the guys you like the most are the least interested in you? What if I told you the reason they're not interested in you is because you look so desperate that it's actually repulsive? Don't worry though. After we discuss the seven dumb things that make you look desperate, you'll know exactly what not to do and how a simple change in your approach can take a man from being repulsed by you to being obsessed with you. Being a textaholic is number one. You're always trying to text the person that you're in a relationship with 24-7, non-stop. 368 days a year. But I actually want you to understand that being a textaholic makes you look desperate and it doesn't make him feel any more attracted to you. It actually only serves the purpose of making him feel less attracted to you. Why? Because I want you to imagine what it would be like to be the woman of his dreams actually. Okay? No diss to you. There's a good chance he perceives his favorite celebrity crush or his dream girl as being out of his league. And so, subsequently, because he doesn't feel like he's on that level, how do you think his dream girl is likely gonna treat him if she's truly out of his league? She's not really gonna have time for him. She's not really gonna be that interested in him. She's not really gonna wanna spend that much time around him or talking to him. She's gonna have other things to do. She's gonna have other people beating down her door. She's gonna have other people who are willing to crawl on glass and sniff her butthole. It's not anything interesting that this one of a thousand men is interested in her. You feel like you're talking to him all the time. He also feels like he's talking to you all the time, but he also is forced to infer, which means just come to the conclusion that the only way you would be able to text him 24 seven all the time is if there was nothing in your life ever more important than him and or if you just had so little going on in your life that you had nothing but time to sit around and text him all day, every day. Either way, either one of those two conclusions is very bad for you because you come across as being desperate and needy for him. For those of you who have been here, what do I always tell you to use the phone as? You're using the phone as a scheduling tool to get the next in-person hangout or date, okay? Because at the end of the day, you are not focused on anything except getting him to continuously want to see you in person more. And the most valuable and quality time he can spend with you, where he gets the best experience from you, will always be in person. Number two, asking for attention. Just because you're trying to communicate more and let him know what you want and what you need and all that good stuff, that doesn't mean you sit around asking him, please, why don't you text me more? You never text me anymore. Why don't you call me? Are you cheating on me? Why don't you call me? You said you were gonna call me at 9 p.m. and you and you called me at 9.01 p.m. Does that mean you don't like- While you think that you're making your feelings, you know, and you're communicating, what's actually happening underneath the surface is you're becoming a desperate ball of anxiety. And he only sees you as less than. Because why are you so bent out of shape because I'm not calling you or because I'm not texting you? Do you not have anything else to do in your life except for sit around and watch the clock move? as you know you're you're waiting for me to text you or call you or facetime you or try to uh, hang out with you because think about what i just said earlier and what his dream girl would be embodying if he was ever in a relationship with his dream girl do you really think his dream girl would be asking him why she didn't why he didn't call at 9 p.m like he said he was gonna call no his dream girl would be out there doing a whole bunch of fun interesting amazing things not worried about him his dream girl would be having so many men willing to crawl on glass and sniff her butthole, she can't even remember that she, you said that you were going to call her at 9 p.m. She's actually got other things to do. Oh, you didn't call me at 9 p.m.? Oh, cool. I didn't even realize like I was doing so many, so much other stuff. Not that, oh, you shouldn't care or you shouldn't um, you ever want to be with your man or ever want to speak to your man and you should just be totally detached and never care about anything, never like anyone, never love anyone. What I'm saying is you should also have things that you care about 
that are important to you that you spend your time and energy on that the fact that he might not call you or text you doesn't bend you out of shape so much that it feels like the world is falling apart, okay? It helps to keep you stable. The moment you open your mouth and start becoming needy and asking for more attention, even when he does give you more attention, it's from a place of pity. Because he sees how in pain you are, about the fact that he's not giving you enough attention and because he feels sorry that you're in so much pain, he gives you attention for the simple fact he no longer wants you to be in pain. Number three, let's talk about being Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is being a detective, searching for answers 24 seven, trying to figure out who he's talking to, who he's going out with, who he's spending time with, what he's doing when he's not texting you and then taking that information and interrogating him. Where are you? Why didn't you text me? What are you doing right now? Who are you with? Which friends? Take a picture. Show me the room. Show me the bathroom, right? I know that the men tell you, oh, I like a girl that's a little bit crazy. Oh, I like when my girl cares. Oh, I like when she's a little crazy. But what I want you to understand is when you become Sherlock Holmes like this, all that does is the reason they say they like that is because it's an ego boost. Why? Because I know you're so concerned with me is the only way or reason you'd be sitting here on your phone comparing which glass and which frame is the same glass on the same table, which means you're out on a date with another girl. That gives me an ego boost because now I know how much power I have over you. Now I know subconsciously I don't need to chase you or pursue you. You're so obsessed with me. You're so consumed by me that everything I do, even when I step out of the house, all you're thinking about is what I'm doing when I step out of the house. You don't even have time or space in your life or in your brain to be thinking about anything that's important to you. So much so that if I don't show you exactly what I'm doing 24 hours of the day, your whole world is going to fall apart. And the only way you could be so much of a Sherlock Holmes chasing around every single little Scooby-Doo clue is if you were had little value, little to no value, or if I was the most important thing in your life. Do you think his dream girl is sitting on the phone watching his car drive from home up until the place that he said he was going to go? Because for some of you, it's very difficult to even peep the information and not say anything. So my advice to you would be to not even bother yourself viewing that information that you don't feed that monster. Okay. The reason I say don't feed that monster is because it becomes like an addiction. Once you start checking up on it one, two, three times and you make it a habit, every single time he goes out, every single little thing, you're looking for all of these clues all the time. And each and every time you go to that Instagram, you go to that WhatsApp status, that becomes an addiction in itself where you spend all of your time and energy and focus on someone else's life instead of thinking about what your needs are for yourself. And then you wonder why your relationships feel so draining. Number four, we have being way too agreeable. Part of us as men being with a woman and being with a partner is that that is a different person than us. That is a whole individual outside of us. If I wanted to be with myself, I would be single. I say that to say, when they get into a relationships, don't think of it as a crime that you have opinions or thoughts or perspectives that are in disagreements with him. Don't think of it as a crime, especially that if he uh, treats you in a way that you find inappropriate or you find disrespectful, that you shouldn't speak up for yourself because you just want to be agreeable or peaceful, right? That you don't want to cause drama. You're so in so much seek of being likable that you try your best to be agreeable. And so because you want to be agreeable, you don't want to cause conflict by speaking up for the ways someone has treated you badly. People can sense that after a while, that you're just an empty shell that will constantly agree, constantly be always trying to keep peace, constantly trying to be as likable as possible. You don't want to have opinions. You don't want to have perspective. You don't want to set boundaries because you want to be likable. And all that tells me is your desire to be so likable stems from the fact that you're desperate for attention and validation from me, that you need this relationship to work with me, that you have no other options except for me, that I'm the best you can ever do, that you're trying your absolute hardest, that I will like you as much as you like me. 
Obviously, the men aren't writing this in their notebook, but these are the types of feelings they start to feel subconsciously, which is why they respond to you in those particular ways, which is why they start pulling back from you as you begin to show these behaviors and approach the relationship this particular way. Men can be a lot like dogs. When you train them to understand the difference between right and wrong and you train them that you mean business, they go, oh, you're one of the girls that means business and actually respects yourself. Okay, I respect you now too. I act, you show. I respect that you have boundaries. I respect that you stand on business. I respect that what you say you're about, you're actually about and you won't move for anyone. I actually respect that. You should be looking forward in your relationships and your situationships to the first time you can have your big fight with a guy and show him that you mean business because it's a, it's very good to set that groundwork early that if he doesn't act the right way, if he doesn't treat you the right way, if he doesn't be respectful in the way he approaches you, that he, there won't be access to you, okay? And that's why I think, you know, that first fight can be a really good show, not tell, a good show of that, all right? Number five, let's also discuss being way too forgiving. When people see that you will forgive them for anything, no matter what it is, because you just don't want to do the job of addressing them uh, uh, appropriately, people realize that you're willing to forgive, not because you're a kind person, but simply because... <laughs> You just don't have the cojones or the backbone or the spine to stand up for what you believe in. It communicates to me that you don't think you're actually deserving of much, which is why you allow me to treat you anyway and you forgive me regardless of how I treat you. It's an amazing feeling for me because I realize once again, I don't have to put my best foot forward in the relationship. I don't even have to bother respecting you. I don't have to bother acting accordingly. I don't have to bother doing the right things. I don't have to bother saying the right things. I just have to sit back, do whatever it is I want to do, whenever it is I want to do it, and not worry about how you feel about it. Because all that matters is how he feels. Even if you do feel upset, even if you do feel slighted, even if you do feel disrespected, you're just going to forgive anyways, and there won't be any consequences for it regardless. Regardless, as they believe you're more and more desperate, they begin changing the way they approach you and the way they treat you more and more until finally they're treating you completely differently than they were at the beginning of the relationship. So that doesn't mean that you never forgive people ever for anything that they do and never give them a chance to change or adjust their behavior. That also doesn't mean you forgive them for every little thing. There's a balance in between there where you stand your ground and you set the boundaries and expectations before they even happen. Because a lot of you, a lot of you are, are going into your relationships and you're hoping that there will never be any conflict rather than going into the relationship saying, I know these are hard boundaries for me. So before they even become problems, you come right out and you let him know what your standards and expectations are. And not just letting him know, but letting him actually see that. Let's say you don't like it when uh, he tells you he's going to pick you up at 10 p.m., but he always ends up coming late at 11 p.m. And let's say one day he does that. He comes at 11 p.m. and he doesn't tell you where he's going to be or whatever. And, you know, he messes up the plans. You might say one day, look, I told you what time to be here. I told you I'm not I, I, I'm not dealing with someone who's going to show up at uh, you know, 11 p.m. when you said the plan was to be for 10 p.m., you can go back home. I'm not going out with you. You don't need to keep repeating yourself over and over. This is a boundary. This is a boundary. You let him know. Once you see that he's done it, you let him know. I don't appreciate this. And then the next time he does it, you let him feel that you don't appreciate that. That's the one-two punch. Next, we have trying to hard. You're like on your hands and knees, scrubbing the floor in your maid outfit, looking up at him saying, can you see how hard I'm scrubbing the floor? Does it not look shiny and squeaky clean? Do you not see that I'm the perfect wife for you and you would love to be in a relationship with me because I'm the perfect maid? You see how clean I scrub these floors? I mean, it's cool that you scrub the floors. I, I don't, I don't really feel myself wanting to be with you anymore because the natural inclination is that as you try more to be seen and be heard and be noticed by him, that maybe that will help him actually see you, hear you and notice you. When in reality, the more you try to be noticed and be seen by him, the more he realizes this is all a desperate attempt at getting his attention uh, and validation. 
And so what does he do? He takes several steps back because he comes to the realization that he is the probably the most important thing in your life, which is why you're trying so hard for him. All right, it's, it's like coming up to you and saying, I'll pay you for the product I'm offering. Well, then it must not be a very good product if you're telling me you'll pay me for it. Receive, relax, observe, and listen. When you're doing that, you won't be trying so hard, which is good, and you'll allow him to do the job of pursuing you. You won't come across as desperate or needy. You'll come across as secure and confident, which is exactly what makes you the most attractive. His dream girl is not going to lack confidence because that would defeat the purpose of it being his dream girl. You don't dream about the girl who's desperate for you <laughs> and desperate for your attention. You dream about the girl who is unattainable. And number seven, we have always being free. When you're always available, on text, on phone call, you're always available to hang out. All that communicates to him is that you must not have anything else to do. You're available to hang out within an hour. You're available to hang out tomorrow. You're available to hang out. Like that's the same reason why I always tell you to not be saying yes to last minute hangouts. Can you come over to my place right now? Can you be here in one hour? D you better not act like DoorDash. You hear me? You start acting like DoorDash. He will treat you like DoorDash. Do you ever go on the DoorDash app except for the times that you need food? No. You only click on that DoorDash app when you need food. Every other time that you don't need food, you don't open the app. It's the same way you'll get treated if you start acting like DoorDash. He will only hit you up or talk to you when he needs food, i.e. Squirtle. There's nothing wrong with telling him. I do enjoy spending time with you. I do enjoy hanging out with you. However, my schedule and my life does not allow me to say yes to things the day of. I have responsibilities. I have other things that I also care about that are, pa that are passions of mine that are important to me. While you are amazing, you are not the be all and end all of my life. If you want access to me, if you want to see me, if you want to spend more time with me, you can. But that time has to be allocated and scheduled in advance, well in advance, that I can make sure I'm actually free to spend that time with you. Otherwise, I won't be.